Welcome to Vermont Avenue. As we experience worship this day, we thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here as we lift praises to the name of our God. We are grateful to be alive and we thank God for all that he has done. If you could just take some time right where you are and just put down whatever's in your hands and just lift your hands and tell God thank you. Thank you for letting me be alive. Thank you for keeping my family. Thank you for being my savior. Amen. We have come to worship the Lord today. And we will worship him with our whole hearts. Hear now our call to worship. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth. Be silent before him. As we gather to worship today, I want to pause now to just share a few announcements with you. First, as you're continuing to stay safe, I pray that you remember, continue to be vigilant in washing your hands. Stay home as much as you can. And if you just have to leave, leave with some gloves and a mask to make sure that you're protecting yourselves and those around you. Trying to stay safe is very, very important and we encourage you to do just that. We also wanna invite you to join us for a prayer call on Tuesdays at noon. You can call in on our prayer line at 605-313-4159. Again, that's 605. 313-4159 and enter the access code 175374. Again, the access code is 175374. Tuesdays at noon, we would love to have you call in and join us as we offer a word of encouragement. And then there's a chance that you may be in need of prayer. If you need prayer, we have our prayer team standing by all you have to do is send your name and your prayer request to vabcprayer at gmail.com. Again, that's vabcprayer at gmail.com. Now, as you govern yourselves according to those announcements, we pause at the top of our service to give those of you who've not had a chance this week an opportunity to give. At this time, you can go to our website and go to the online giving tab. When you get to the online giving tab, you can make sure to put in whatever kind of gift you want to give. As you give your gifts, know that the Lord still loves a cheerful giver. Know that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And know that obedience is better than sacrifice. So take just a few moments now to go off our streaming page to go and give and then come right back here and continue on in worship with us.
good morning. I will be reading Psalm chapter 91, verses 3 through 7. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thy. This is the word of the Lord. What a friend we have in Jesus, and all our griefs and pains are bare. Oh, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. What peace we often forfeit, and oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Most holy Lord God, the grand architect of the universe, the giver of every good and perfect gift, we come this morning, oh Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, oh Lord. Thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercy. But also aware of this virus that has struck the world, oh Lord. We come here with bowed heads and humble hearts, knowing that you are the answer. We come, oh Heavenly Father, around the world and bless all of the families who have been struck by the virus, oh Heavenly Father. Their loved ones and our friends, oh Heavenly Father. We come this morning, O oh Lord, thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercy. But you know, O King David had these words for thee. He said, Whither shall I go from thy spirit, and whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there, make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. And if I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. And at this moment, O oh Heavenly Father, we are in your hands. And you're looking down on us, O oh Heavenly Father. We come this morning as a special blessing on the past of this church, Reverend John, Dr. Cox, O oh Heavenly Father. Lift him up, keep him strong, keep his spirit, O oh Heavenly Father. Bless he and his family, and a continued blessing on the Vernon Avenue Baptist Church family. And all who are here, hear us this morning, O oh Heavenly Father. We can't thank you enough. But we ask that you anoint the world this morning at the sound of my voice, that we get through this epidemic, O Heavenly Father, and keep us close and be ever mindful of thy power, O Heavenly Father, that you are in control. Lead us and guide us, and just thank you, O Lord. And as I always say, you know what's in our hearts, you know what's in our minds. This prayer and blessing, O Heavenly Father. We're asking our son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man. 
makes me want to run on in his name. Whatever this is, whatever it is, it won't let me, it won't let me hold my Love all my makes me love my friends. Oh, won't let me won't be. let me be shamed. Won't let me, won't let me be shamed. I can tell I can tell the world that I've, I've been born, born again. again. What is this? What is this that make folks say Ooh. that I'm insane? What is this? What is this that makes me call on Jesus' name? Whatever this is, whatever it is, well, it won't let me, it won't let me hold my peace. It won't let me hold my peace. You know that it makes me love my enemies. Yes, it makes me love my enemies.
The sermonic scripture has already been read in your hearing. It's Psalm number 91. And as we look to Psalm 91, our focus this day is on verses 3 through 7. Verses 3 through 7. In this particular psalm, we see the psalmist working to help us understand who God is and what God does. I want you to hear again the word of the Lord. Surely he will save you from the fowler snare, from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with the feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. It says a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. This is the word of God. And we say thanks be to God. We began Psalm 91 with a titled sermon, Christian Quarantine, and I believe that's going to be the theme that we work from today. This idea of Christian quarantine, but today's specific sermon title is Defense Against Danger. Defense Against Danger, and I solicit all of your prayers. One of the things the psalmist does here is zero in on identifying the dangers that he faces. He seems to have experienced dangers of different types. And he does not give us great detail about what specifically he's referring to. But he does give some indication about the variety of different challenges that he faces. On the one hand, he shows us that it is a picture of the way we can experience in our own lives a variety of trouble. And then it is another snapshot of the way these troubles can layer themselves in our lives. For instance, before we were thrust into the midst of this pandemic here in America, Perhaps you had your own share of troubles. I won't pretend that I know what your troubles are. But it may be that you were experiencing difficulty and uncertainty in your marriage. And that like the psalmist, this was causing you to feel like your marriage was facing danger. For someone else, it was a lack of stability in your finances. And your uncertainty about your financial future was a danger that you were facing. Others may experience trouble in their health that you've gotten a diagnosis from a doctor. Or you've received a feeling, a pain that is new and different and unique. And whatever it is, it is causing you to feel as though there's danger lurking in your life. Or maybe it's just your children, and you think they're going to drive you crazy. You're not sure if they're going to snap out of whatever's driving them insane, but your prayer is that your children don't make you go mad, whatever it is. The danger that you face is real. It's palpable. And I wonder what happens to that danger. When you turn on the news and hear about the coronavirus, when you hear about this pandemic, and in the mornings when you watch the news and see that the number of cases keeps going up, and at the same time the number of deaths keeps going up, you hear about the age range that is most susceptible, and you hear about the ways in which this disease is creeping across racial lines, it's creeping across gender lines, it's going into nursing homes and behind gated communities, it is localizing itself in celebrities 
and in unknown persons everywhere. It feels like a new danger. But the question today, friends, is with this new danger, as we try to stay in the house, as we try to protect ourselves, with this new danger, what happens to the old danger? What happens to all of our old problems when we see this new problem? I want to suggest that you are right in the place that the psalmist can speak to you when you have layered problems of different sorts and different types. If your Bibles are open, we'll see the psalmist's first problem. The first danger that he lays out for us, these dangers that seem not to go away, is found in verse number three. You see where the word of God says, surely he will save you from the fowler snare. That's the first danger. The fowler snare is a picture of these people that hunt birds. And in their quest to get birds that they either sell at the market or bring home as food for their family. They've designed these kinds of snares that they craft with their hands and then they hide them in the brush so that some unsuspecting fowl can get in the snare and get caught up. The psalmist is saying that in my life one of the types of dangers that I face feels like a fowler's snare. The psalmist suggests, I don't know who set the trap. I don't know who made the trap. All I know is that sometimes in life it feels like I've been snapped in a trap. Oh, I may be talking to somebody else who in your own way, in your own life, you have found yourself in a trap. Maybe it was set by somebody who doesn't know you at all. Someone who you haven't done anything to, but they've made up their mind. They want to see you snapped up in a trap. For others, the sad, unnerving truth is that it came at the hands of a friend. Someone you thought you could trust. Someone you thought you could count on and depend on. They were the very ones who set that trap that you walked unsuspectingly into. The psalmist says the fowler snare is the first kind of danger that I face. And if you're listening to these words and you feel as though you have been in or are standing inside of a trap that somebody set for you, and you can say amen when the psalmist writes the words in verse number three. But he goes on to describe a whole nother kind of danger. It's in the same verse so you don't have to look far. Verse number three, right after he talks about the fowler snare, he talks about this thing that he calls a deadly pestilence. Now we're not sure exactly what pestilence he's referring to. We're not sure what specifically he means, but there's some kind of malady, some kind of pandemic, some kind of plague that is wreaking havoc in the land. It is going to and fro. It is reaching victims of all ages, races, and creeds. And in that same way, when we hear these words, this Mention in not only verse number three, but in verse number six, it reminds us as we sit at home in the midst of this pandemic what the psalmist must have felt like. Maybe he was sitting on the edge of his bed or maybe he was sitting on the couch and he had turned on CNN or MSNBC and he heard about coronavirus how it was wreaking havoc in the land and he cries out about the pestilence more than the pestilence we get over into verse 7 and it hits home even more for us verse 7 describes the results of this pestilence that the psalmist mentions it says that because of this plague because of this pestilence that is wreaking havoc on the land. Verse 7 says that a thousand will fall 
at thy side. Then it says, 10,000 will fall at thy right hand. You see, when we turn on the news and we hear these death tolls going up, it makes this real. It makes this frightening. It gives us reason to take pause. There's a reason why folks are nervous. There's a reason why folks are being filled with anxiety. It's because people are checking out behind this virus. This falls right into our laps. This hits us right at our core and shakes us. One of the things that the psalmist does here, though, is he helps us keep perspective. You see, he says, a thousand fall at your side. He says, 10,000 fall at your right hand. And though it's close to where you are, it doesn't touch the psalmist. I wish someone could hear me who has decided that because some malady, some situation, some instance has gotten close to you, that it is also a death sentence for you too. That because mama has been strung out on drugs, it means you have to be strung out on drugs. That because daddy never went to school, it means you can't go to school. And these things sometimes that get near us can trick and fool us and make us think we cannot survive the things that are claiming the lives of people around us. You need to know today, you need to hear these words that though the dangers of life get close to you, there's a reason for you to sit up and be serious. There's reason for you to be alert at your post. There's reason for you, like the psalmist, to cry out, where is my God? It goes on to talk about another kind of danger. After he talks about this pestilence, after he has talked about the fowler's snare, what the psalmist does is he introduces this third danger. Is he's identified for us, one, the closeness of the danger. He said the thousand are going to fall. They're going to fall right at your side. Then he says there are going to be 10,000 that fall right by your right hand. The dangers in life sometimes get really close to us. Not only the closeness of the danger, he lifts for us the consistency of the danger. You see it, don't you? He talks now in the third case about these arrows. And he talks about these arrows that come. He says that these arrows that come in verse number five, fly by day. Then he turns around and says in verse number six, this pestilence again. Stalks in the nighttime. It means that whether you are an early riser who wakes up morning, there's something you've got to be afraid of, something you've got to be worried about because there are arrows that are flying by day. Those of you who say, preacher, I'm no early riser. I'm a night owl. I'm a night hawk. Well, those of you who stay up late find that when the sun starts going down, when it gets beyond that golden time of day that they sing about. As the night sky turns midnight blue, the arrows stop flying and the pestilence comes out of nowhere. Psalmist says, whether you're up early or up late, there's danger in the land flares up on you, surrounds you, catches you always off guard. It's enough to make your anxiety go crazy. It's enough to raise your blood pressure. It's enough to make you insane. That's the bad news. But God sent me here with some good news for you today. The good news begins right in verse number three. In the same breath, where the psalmist mentions the work of the haters who make these snares. The psalmist says, surely God will save me from the
those snares that exist. The good news is that even though the haters are plotting against you, the bad news and the bad news is they're plotting against you, but the good news is God still got you. It doesn't matter what the weapon they form against you. The Bible says it will not prosper because God knows how to break snares. God knows how to keep traps from snapping when they should. God knows how to protect his children. Oh, but there's more good news than that. That even when those who are scheming against you will not have success because God will say so, there's more good news than that. The other good news allows us to see where we are. He says that we are able to camp out beneath the wings of God. It's in verse number four. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. That's good news for somebody. It's a picture of the tenderness of God. It's a picture of a God who wants to hold you close, not at a distance, but God wants to bring you close beneath his wings. He wants to remind you. He wants to remind you that he loves you and that he's a nurturing God. He wants you to know that you're able to get a break from the heat of the noonday sun by tucking yourself beneath the shadow of the Lord's wings. More than that, he's trying to show you that no matter what's happening in the world around you, there is a safe place. There's a place you can go. There's a place you can be. It is said that in one of the tremendous wildfires of ancient time, one biblical writer looked out and saw where a bird's nest that was situated in the ground had a wildfire approaching. Instead of trying to get her baby birds out of the nest, the writer records that the mother bird just got on the nest and hovered over the nest and brooded over her young so that they would be protected from the flame. She was telling them, I want you close to me. She was telling them that when danger is all around, there is a safe place. That's a word for somebody now who knows that you're safe right now because you're beneath his wing. Who know that your children are all right now because they're beneath his wing. Who knows that whatever was going wrong in your life somehow subsided when you got beneath God's Wing, but can I tell you, child of God, there's more than that. The good news goes beyond just being beneath his wings. It tells us also that God has a shield. It's still in verse number four. It says, his faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. The shield of God is a picture of God's strength. The shield is hard and sturdy. It's strong and designed to withstand the attacks on the outside. The shield of God protects us from all kinds of danger. This image is meant to combat those arrows that are flying by day. Let me tell you, child of God, why God's shield is a blessing. God's shield is a blessing because God's shield is big enough to cover me all over. He covers my head and my feet. He covers my going out and my coming in. God covers my whole family because he has a big old shield. Oh, but can I tell you, child of God, the reason tears may be streaming from your face, the reason joy is welling up in your heart at the thought of the shield of God, because maybe... Like me and the psalmist, you too have had this experience. When the dangers and the pressures of life that were aimed at you had your name on them, meant to see you fall, when those dangers came near you while you were camped out beneath God's shield, you heard this thud sound. And every time you hear that thud, it's 
a reminder that what the enemy had planned for you, God has canceled it. Somebody heard a thud sound when their child was delivered from drugs. Somebody heard a thud sound when that marriage that was on the rocks came back together. Somebody else heard a thud sound when you didn't know how you were going to pay your bills and your phone rung and somebody said, the Lord told me to bless you. You've heard a thud sound because the devil tried to get you, but God blocked it. He has a shield over my life. And I have heard the thud of the enemy's plans failing before my face. Then there's one last thing that has chills on my body. He says, a thousand are falling at your side. He says, 10,000 are falling at your right hand. What he's doing is reminding us that no matter what's going on around you, no matter how many people fall victim to things, no matter how many people get stuck in traps, no matter how many people succumb to the dangers and vicissitudes of life, God has a plan for your life. And what has been true for your friends and your family may not be true for you. That because somebody else went down the path that you're on and ended in destruction, God can save you off of that path. Just because you started out wrong doesn't mean God cannot redeem you. Just because you began one way doesn't mean God doesn't know how to get you out of the mess you're in. What I'm saying is God has a destiny for you. God has a future for you. And so don't let anybody tell you you won't amount to anything because of who your brother was. You won't be anything because of who your parents were. You'll never amount to anything because of where you live or what you drive. Tell them God has a plan for my life. Tell them that's why I don't get worried about what's happening around me. That's why I don't let the plans unfolding in the lives of others distract me from what God is calling me to become. God knows how to protect you. Anyone who can stay with God and can say, though hell is breaking loose in my life, though the hell hounds are chasing me down, there is one whose wings I know how to get up under. There is one whose shield is still strong enough to protect me. There is one who has a defense against all kinds of dangers. The reason I'm here today, not because of my education, has nothing to do with my family or the schools that I went to. I'm here today because God stepped in and intervene when the devil meant it for evil. I'm here today because God said I have a plan for your life. And as long as I trust him, he will order my steps and guide my pathway. Amen. God, we thank you for being the kind of God who knows the dangers that we face not only knows the dangers that we face, but he's not intimidated by them. He's not afraid of the challenges that come in our direction. But God, you know how to handle all danger. Thank you for the invitation that is yet extended for us to come beneath your warm wings. Thank you for being faithful and having a shield that guards us. Thank you that though danger may be all around me, you can still minister to my life right where I am. This is our prayer this day, that you guide us forward in trusting you even more, that you help us display our love for you. And if someone is listening and tuning in and needs to be saved, would you give them the courage to say, what can I do to be saved? How can I connect with Jesus Christ? 
How can I get an escape from this danger? It's in Jesus Christ this day. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I pray. All God's people said, Amen. We pause now to give you an opportunity. Yes, you who have heard God's voice and feel clearly the tug of the Holy Spirit on your heart. You are able now, uniquely, to connect with our church and connect with what God is doing, but more than that, you're able now to give your heart to Jesus Christ. All you've got to do is send an email with your name and your phone number to vabcconnect at gmail.com. Someone will receive that email will reach out to you and let you know how grateful we are that you responded to God's voice. You may be here saying, I know a time when Jesus was my priority, but I gave up on him. I moved away from him, but I want to surrender my heart to him afresh this day, right home where I am. You can send that email and we'll get you connected. The last invitation is for those who are here or nearby and just don't have a church home. We would love to be your church. I would personally love nothing more than to be your pastor. All you've got to do is send us your name and email to vabcconnect at gmail.com and you will hear from us this day. I pray that as you're moving in that direction, as you're making those decisions for Christ, that you've done so with joy in your hearts. And we celebrate all of you who are moving in that direction. Now we want to pause to give you an opportunity to give your gifts. Maybe you didn't give earlier in this week or earlier in the service, but now's a great time. Because we remember the Lord loves a cheerful giver and we are clear that the Lord has told us that it is just more blessed to give than to receive. I ask that you go onto our website on the online giving button and just click that. You can fill in the amount and the area in which you're able to give and the frequency with which you give. Some of you may say, well, preacher, it'll be easier for me to just create a recurring gift so that it automatically comes out off my card or out of my account each week. Some may want to do that monthly. However, it's most convenient for you. We just don't want you to forget with all that's going on, the importance of giving. Giving and your gifts is what positions us to continue to be a blessing to our community, to be a blessing to those who are in need who contact us and say we need some support and assistance. I know you're going to give and I know you're going to be generous and we thank you for those gifts even now. We thank you so much for those gifts. Now we will hear more worship music.
great song to hear during this time at this moment as we try to hang on in there as God guides us our way through. Let me share just a few brief announcements with you. Just a reminder in case you missed it earlier. We want to remind you stay home as best you can. If you just have to get out and have to get out, we're reminding you to wear your gloves, wear your mask, protect yourself, protect people around you, and then try not to touch your hands and face. Make sure you wash your hands as frequently as you can and hurry and get back home. We want you to be mindful of that. We also want to invite you to join us for our Tuesday prayer call. Tuesdays at noon, you can dial in at 605-313-4159. Again, the prayer call number is 605-313-4159. And you enter the access code 175374. Again, that's 175 374. You call in at noon on Tuesdays and you'll receive a word of encouragement that will hopefully help guide you through the remainder of your week. Lastly, for those of you who are interested in being a part of our prayer team, if you're willing to pray for someone else, or if you're listening now and you have a prayer request that you just need God to do something in your life or in the life of someone you know, just send an email to vabcprayer at gmail.com vabcprayer at gmail.com and you send your name and prayer request if you have a prayer request or if you're willing to pray just send your name and say I'm willing to pray for others thank you to all of you who are already a part of our prayer team who have been busy at work praying for the issues of our friends our members and our loved ones as we prepare to receive the final blessing, I pray that this worship service was meaningful for you. I pray that this reminder that God does have a defense against all kinds of dangers. And this reminder, even in song, that the Lord will help you. He will help you to hold out. Receive now the final blessing. Now unto him who is able to keep you all from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now, today, and forevermore. May we all sing together.